What is performance shooting? Performance shooting is using metrics to find the balance of both speed and accuracy in an effort to collect as many points as possible in as short a time as possible. Now, why do metrics matter? Well, if you think about almost anything else you do in life where you're trying to get better at something, so let's say uh, you're going to the gym and you're trying to get stronger. If you go and you bench press at the gym uh, a certain amount of weight, uh, but you don't keep track of how much weight you benched or how many reps you did, the next time you go back to the gym, how are you going to know where to start? Um, you almost never hear somebody say, oh yeah, man, I just put on um, you know, a certain number of plates. I can't remember how many, don't remember what the number said on them, uh, but I threw them on there and I lifted it, I don't know, for a while. Right? Nobody ever says that. They know exactly how much weight they can bench. They know exactly how many reps they can do. Uh, if you're a runner, you know exactly what your mile time is and you're always working at getting better at something. And so if we don't have metrics and we don't have a way to measure our performance, then we're really going to be stagnant and we're not going to get anywhere um, and we're not going to have a good idea of where we're actually at with our performance. Um, so what metrics do we use in performance shooting? So two metrics that we're going to use are speed and accuracy. We're going to break down both of those how we measure them, and then we're actually going to get onto the range and, and do some shooting and show you uh, some of the stuff live. So uh, let's start with speed, right? Uh, speed is super important, whether you are uh, involved in a gunfight or you are shooting a USPSA competition uh, in a match set, right? Speed is super important. The fastest guy uh, is usually pretty high contender for that first place spot. Um, and that's, you know, regardless of whether you're in a match or defensive setting. So uh, when it comes to speed, how are we gonna actually measure that, right? Uh, first of all, we can never measure it based off of our feelings. So uh, something that I heard a long time ago is I can never trust my own perception of time because my own perception of time is going to be inherently flawed. And so I have to have something that's going to accurately measure uh, exactly uh, how much time a certain item is taking, uh, such as, let's say, the draw. So how much time is it taking me to get my gun out of my holster into my hand, sights on target and delivering the first accurate shot on target, um, how long is that taking? A lot of times what we'll see is people coming through, uh, maybe they go take a class or uh, they jump into uh, performance shooting for the first time and you might ask them, hey, what's your draw time, right? Well, a lot of times they don't know. They might say, I don't know, five seconds. Maybe somebody else be like, maybe a quarter second. And there's just really no uh, way for them to tell because they've just never measured it before. And anyone who's ever worked with a shot timer uh, knows exactly what kind of performance to expect. So getting into shot timers, right? Shot timers are super important. If you don't have a shot timer, you need to get one. And if you don't have one uh, or you need to save up for one, you need to go download one on the app store uh, and just kind of use one of those apps until you get your shot timer in because these are invaluable to training. So uh, first of all, what is a shot timer? Shot timer is just a device that is uh, essentially a microphone and it's gonna record the time between shots. And so it's gonna give me a starting beep, uh, which you can hear right here. So I've got it set on delay. There's the beep. That's going to be my start signal. And then after that, it's going to record every single shot and it's going to measure the time between the shots and give me an overall time from first shot to last shot. So um, why do they matter? Why do shot timers matter? Well, anytime I do any sort of standardized drill or exercise, I can go back and look at the information on my shot timer and see where I'm uh, where I'm losing time, where I'm making up time, whether I'm being efficient or not. And if I have set a baseline of performance for myself, let's say at seven yards, my draw time is uh, one and a half seconds. Then that's just kind of my average. Well, if I go to do another uh, drill or exercise, let's say I go to do a build drill, seven yards, six rounds, uh, and I see on the shot timer that my first shot is taking two seconds. I can go, man, I'm burning about half a second of what my average baseline is, what's going on. And then I can use other tools like video diagnostics and things like that to figure out where I'm going wrong and I can actually make improvements. But the first step in recognizing that there's improvement to be made is actually looking at a shot timer and reading off those splits and figuring out where is that low hanging fruit to actually make up time, all right? So that's shot timers. We are going to do another video uh, later on breaking down how to practice and how to actually uh, gather information from our shot timers, how to read uh, the information it's giving us between splits and how to use that essentially 
how it practiced, right? But for now, let's get into the next uh, item here on the list. So the next thing that is going to come into play is going to be uh, your targets, okay? So if we wanna measure speed, we're gonna use a shot timer. If we wanna measure accuracy, we've gotta use a target of some sort. Super important that any target that you use has scorable zones, okay? Um, this is a very classic, uh, known around the world target. Uh, this is an IPSC target. And what you'll see, uh, and I don't know if the camera's gonna pick this up well, but it's got scorable zones here, right? And so it's got these perforated lines right here. So this is my A zone here. And then I've got a slightly larger C zone or Charlie zone. And then I've got a bigger D zone or Delta zone, okay? Um, super important that we have scorable targets because there are times when accuracy is going to matter more than speed, and there's times when speed is going to matter more than accuracy. And uh, if I, if speed is more important, I might be able to accept uh, not just alphas, but maybe Charlies as well, right? Um, and there might be times when only alphas are acceptable, okay? And so I have to be able to have some sort of target that's gonna help me uh, score those two things. Here's another super popular target that a lot of people use. This is an NRA B8 target. This is just a repair center. We've got a full-size B8 over there. We'll show some shooting on that here in a second. But essentially what we've got here, same kind of deal going on. We've got uh, concentric circles here and uh, scorable zones. So right here in the middle, we have an X ring. Okay, surrounding that is a 10 ring. Both the X and the 10 are worth 10 points. The next circle out, we've got the nine ring, an eight ring, and a seven ring. Okay, and so if you imagine shooting a drill on this, let's say you shot five rounds on this target right here. The highest score you could get would be 50, 50 points, right? But if I dropped one out of that 10 or X ring into the nine, let's say I put four here and one here, then of course I'd drop one point, that'd be a 49 out of 50 possible score. And so bullseye targets are obviously popular across the world, and a lot of shooters start out with something like a bullseye target. I know I did. Um, when I first started shooting, I was limited to an indoor range where I couldn't do anything dynamic, and so a lot of my shooting was simply shooting on bullseyes. And I felt like it was a good way to measure my accuracy, uh, but what I didn't do a good job of right away was also incorporating some sort of time standard in there as well. And so we're going to do a drill that actually shows you guys how you could potentially uh, incorporate some time into this uh, kind of target as well. Here's the target that you're going to see the most uh, on our channel. Uh, this is going to be a USPSA target. So USPSA is essentially the uh, American um, kind of counterpart of uh, IPSC, which is an international organization. Uh, USPSA uses a little bit more of a humanoid target. I really like these targets because it actually gives me a reference of where I might actually shoot on a human if I had to defend myself uh, with a gun. So uh, what we've got here is we've got the same kind of deal. We've got an A zone right here. This is about six inches by 11 inches approximately. We've got a C zone that includes all of this area here, including the shoulders and the neck. Okay, up here you'll notice I've got like a little credit card A zone, very small, kind of like an I box. Um, and so that's also an alpha zone, we call that the head box A zone. And then around the edge here, just like the other one, we have a D zone or delta zone, okay? Um, some terminology here is used. Uh, we often refer to uh, A zone shots as alphas, and then Charlies, deltas, and misses we call mics. That's gonna be super common terminology. But for the most part here, uh, I'm looking for those nice centered up alpha zone hits, right? Uh, now, there might be times when speed is more important, and in that case, I might be able to expand to that Charlie zone and just get hits on paper, um, or just hits on the Charlie zone, and that's gonna be acceptable as well, and that might turn out to be uh, the, best, uh, the best outcome for that particular drill or exercise. So, when it comes to balancing both speed and accuracy, we have to be able to find a balance on a sliding scale, okay? So a lot of drills start you off with giving you an accuracy standard, and then, you get, then they give you a part time, and it's pass or fail. And so if you, if you fail the accuracy standard, but you meet the part time, you fail the whole drill. Or vice versa, if you uh, pass the part, or you, uh, you pass the accuracy, but you fail the part time, you're out of here, right? It's also a fail. Um, that could be a good way to measure where you're at um, if you treat it like a test. But if you treat that as your practice, then you're never going to really know where you're stacking up. Um, it's a good start, but it's not 
the best way, in our opinion. So uh, what you'll have is, uh, let's say we uh, expand our targets, right? So if you look at these three targets here, so over here we've got a target that's got some uh, black paint on it. The black means it's uh, hardcover, right? So anything that goes into the black is a miss. And so you can see now essentially I have a much skinnier target. It's about the width of an A-zone. Um, here, my accuracy might matter a little bit more because the risk of hitting the black or the, or the the hardcover is going to uh, not bode well for me in terms of points. If you look at this target, and this is something we've taken from USPSA, a white target, uh, which is just the back side of another target, that is going to be a no shoot, so or like a hostage target. So this target has a major penalty uh, if you shoot this target. And so if you looked at this target, I was trying to shoot this one, I would want to find potentially the corner of that A zone for the most points possible, or I might just be looking to center it up in the center of the available target, or maybe I would opt to take a headshot on this target. All of those are good options, but you can see on this target, because I have a high risk factor, man, I've got to prioritize accuracy over speed. Now, if I have this target set up, and let's say this target is just set up at maybe five or three yards, right? Well, then I can definitely engage this target super fast, and there's not much of a high risk factor on a target like this that's wide open. We call it open targets. So, how do we find the balance? We're going to get into that right now on the range. Uh, I'm going to pull out a very popular drill uh, that a lot of people start off on called 10-10-10. We're going to shoot that. We're then going to show you guys how to maybe score up some standardized drills on USPSA targets. And then we're going to show you what it looks like to just make up your own drill and then score that with something called hit factor. But we'll get into that on the range. All right, so what a lot of people start off with is just basic bullseye shooting. They're just trying to figure out, can I shoot straight and can I put a decent group on paper? Uh, so downrange here, I'm at the 10 yard line. I've got a B8 hung up, it's the big one. All right, so if I'm uh, terribly off or something like that, we should still be able to track it on paper. Um, and this is a really good place to start. So let's just do 10 rounds, see what kind of accuracy we've got. Absolutely no uh, shot timer going on, no time requirement here at all. Uh, let's just see what we could do in terms of accuracy. Okay, wow, I went to check my timer and it's not even on. I forgot I was demoing. Okay, so uh, yeah, we check it out, right? So it looks like we've got about maybe one, two, three, four, five, about five of them in the X ring and a five of them, maybe that one's probably an X ring as well, it's cutting the perf, and then about four up here in the 10 ring, a little bit high. Um, yeah, so overall, I mean, not. Not super phenomenal accuracy, but pretty good accuracy overall. We're definitely all keeping them in the 10 ring, and for the most part, uh, the majority of them are in the uh, X ring. Um, not my greatest work, but I know that I'm at least accurate, my zero's on, and uh, it's a good starting point. So, the next thing is, let's add some sort of time requirement, okay? Uh, so, a really common drill that's out there is called the 10-10-10, okay? And uh, essentially we're gonna go 10 shots from 10 yards and we're gonna add a part time of 10 seconds, okay? So we will uh, throw a part time on here. And uh, let's see, so again, shot timers are great, right? I've got a part time for, uh, let's see, it's down to five, we'll bump it up here to 10. Um, six, seven, eight. There we go, 10 seconds, all right? So I will go ahead and shoot this again, try to stay under the par time, and essentially what we're looking for is about a 90 or better, which means essentially everything has to be about in the black. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and throw up a new target, a repair center. Look at that, perfect. All right, <clears throat> let's go back and try this out here. 10 yards, and uh, we'll just 
just do this from low ready. <laughs> All right, so I did that in six seconds, so I actually had a lot more time than I thought. Um, well, let's check out the hits and see what kind of accuracy we got. <laughs> so actually better accuracy than my, than my slow fire accurate group, but uh, let's see, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven touching the X ring and three touching the 10 ring. So that's actually 107 X, not bad. I will take it for doing it in six seconds, right? Um, so for me right there, I met both the part time and I met the accuracy standard, right? However, how would you know based on my skill level if that's good or bad for me, right? Um, all it is, it's, it's a pass. I got 100 in six seconds, okay? So let's shoot this now using that sliding scale that we call hit factor. Now, hit factor is simply taking the amount of points that we shot, dividing it by the time that we did it in. So essentially we're measuring points per second. Okay, so if we measure this hit factor, we would look at that and we would say, all right, so we shot a 100, a uh, perfect 100, and we did it in six seconds. And so actually the math works out really well because it was six seconds exactly. That's a six hit factor. We take 100 divided by, by six, and we get a, uh, wow, I'm totally off on that. 100 points divided by six is not six hit factor. What am I saying? The like 18. Or like 17? I'll just whip out my calculator. So 100 divided by 6 is a 16.67, right? So that's a 16.67 hit factor. Not, not bad. Well, I think it's not bad. We're going to shoot it again and see if I could do any better. Maybe if I cut the time in half, but I have maybe only a 90. Who knows? We'll see, right? So let me go ahead and throw up a new target real quick. And uh, we'll see what happens when we shoot it hit factor. and see if we can uh, find that balance that we're talking about. All right, back here 10 yards again. All my mags. All right, we'll start from kind of that compressed ready again, just to be fair, and uh, yeah, let's see what we can do. So that was, waiting for the part time. Okay, that was a 406. So I shot it two seconds faster, uh, but I know I have one even out of the black. So this is gonna score up a little bit more interesting. All right, so take a look, right? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 shots. So all of them are on paper, all accounted for. And the way I count this, I usually go backwards. So 100 minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five. So that's a 95 in 406. So the hit factor to beat was a 16.67. Let's figure out the math on this one. Never do mental math in public, it's bad. 95 points divided by 4.06. Check it out. We've got a 23 hit factor. All right, so 23 point, uh, whatever that is, 39, right? Beating, definitely beating out a 6, uh, 16.67. So uh, is my accuracy better or worse than the first time? It's worse, right? I've got a bigger group. Is my time better or worse? It's significantly better. It's two seconds better. So I know that based off of the last two uh, kind of groups that I shot, this one ends up being a better hit factor, all right? Let's shoot it one more time, push the speed even more, and see uh, where that balance of, of accuracy starts falling off when I start really uh, prioritizing the speed part.
our time is still going. There it is. All right, 310. So I had seven seconds to burn, uh, but we're not really doing that drill anymore. So, all right, let's check it out. So we definitely opened up our group even a little bit more. I definitely have some more out here in the eight ring. So uh, one, let's count them up first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So they're all there. And then let's count back from 100. So two, four, six, eight, nine, and 10. So that's actually a 90, uh, which is a little bit better than I thought it'd be, but a 90 in a 310. So before we did a, we did a 95 in a four something. And now we shaved off about another second. And let's see what that comes up to. So 90 divided by 3.1 is a 29, right? So we're still going up in hit factor right now. And we still haven't really fallen off uh, the wagon in terms of what is possible. Um, this is not just a very, like, a, like a, just a performance shooting or gamer competition type thing, right? I think this type of thing has a lot of value when it comes to defensive shooting as well, right? Um, how many of you guys would be happy with putting 10 shots in three seconds uh, on an eight inch circle like that, right? Um, for me, pretty happy with that from 10 yards. Uh, I know this is gonna be effective kind of fight stopping hits. Um, and the way I'm figuring out whether this is good or bad, again, I'm using metrics, figuring out uh, how I'm doing based off of the time I'm doing it in and the accuracy requirement that I've got, right? Now, if I even go faster, and I'm not gonna do it, but if I even push the, the accuracy faster, I start really bleeding off some points, um, I might end up starting to see that start to fall off at a certain point. Um, but what's, what's gonna be difficult about that on a B8 specifically is because each one of those rings, uh, scoreable rings, is so close together, all right? And so that is where a USPSA target comes in, and we can do the same hit factor math on a USPSA target, and you're gonna strike a little bit better of a balance of that speed and accuracy. So let's go check that out now. All right guys, I've got a new target set up. So we just shot a bunch of the B8, we've learned some stuff from that, we figured out what hit factor is, and now I've got a USPSA target and it's got those scoring zones that we talked about earlier. So just a reminder, we've got the A zone right here, that's five points. Five points also for the head box if we were shooting for the head box. Now we've got three points here in the Charlie zone, okay, which is kind of the neck and that uh, middle torso area, and then this outer fringe, that outer layer, uh, that's gonna be a delta worth one point. So five, three, and one are the scoring zones here. So uh, the drill we're gonna shoot, just to demonstrate the differences uh, in speed and accuracy and figuring out what hit factor is best, is a build drill. So uh, the build drill is definitely a drill that gets shot a lot and probably gets overused, but I think it's a super good one um, to be good at, especially at varying distances. But we're gonna do the classic build drill at seven yards and we're gonna shoot it for hit factor and kind of see um, where the wheels fall off a little bit, maybe in terms of accuracy and how that's gonna affect my hit factor. So uh, we'll walk it back to seven yards and try it out. The first rep I'm gonna do is I'm just going to guarantee A zone shots, okay? So I'm going to go at a pace where I'm for sure gonna get A zone shots, and I'm gonna even go beyond that a little bit and try for a nice tight little group of six shots, okay? So let's go ahead and try that out now. And we'll do this from the holster, uh, of course. <clears throat> Here we go. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna take that part time off. Don't need that uh, 10 second part time. There we go, all right. So, all loaded up, nice tight little group in the A zone and see what our hit factor is, here we go. All right, there's six shots, that's a 396, okay? Now this accuracy is gonna make any defensive shooter super happy uh, because I've got all of my rounds in a tight little uh, spot right there, okay? So, uh, really good accuracy. We'd all admit that's really good accuracy, or at least, uh, at least I think so. Um, so let's figure out the hit factor, just like we did before. So, every alpha is worth five points. Six times five is 30 points possible, and I collected all 30 points on the target, and I did it in a 396. So, 30 points, uh, we're gonna divide that by a 3.96. Ooh, I did that wrong. 30 divided by a 3.96 equals a 7.57 hit factor. All right, 7.57. Let's remember that. And now let's go back and let's just open the target up a little bit and allow myself to use that whole 
A zone, okay? Um, that should allow me to shoot uh, just a little bit quicker. All right, here we go. All right, so that was definitely faster. That was a 2.37. And again, collected all the points, and you guys can see one, two, three, four, five, and six, kind of uh, spreading out the group a little bit, a little bit of vertical uh, stringing, which is to be expected. Where did I put my phone? Here it is. All right, so uh, let's do the math again. So again, all alphas, so 30 points, divided by 2.37. So you guys can already tell, 12.6, much better than the seven that we had before. All right, now, all is well and good as long as I keep keeping them in the alpha zone and keep bringing the time down, of course my hit factor is going to be better. But what if I just let that gun eat and uh, accept pretty much anything on the target? Let's, let's say I start bleeding into that Charlie zone. All right, so I just pasted up the target and uh, we're gonna go ahead and shoot this now um, where I'm pr pr pretty much just prioritizing speed, okay? Uh, the accuracy, it'll be what it is. Um, I bet I'll probably have about three and three here. We'll see, um, but I might surprise myself. Here we go. Six rounds. All right, one, seven, one, okay? Uh, not a super good grip off the draw, and uh, that definitely affected me. Um, so, what do we got? Exactly what I said, three and three. Three alphas and one, two, three Charlies. Uh, that one is close to cutting the line, but we're not gonna count it because I wasn't aiming there. So uh, three alphas and three Charlies, 171. All right, so let's get out the calculator again, figure that out. Um, minus two, four, and six. So 30 minus six is 24 divided by a 1.71. That's gonna give me 14 hit factor. All right, and so, man, I don't even remember what the hit factor was that I did before that. Well. Um, 12? Yeah, so 12. So uh, my hit factor is even a little bit better there uh, just because um, I'm prioritizing speed so much. And so what that tells me is my hit factor is a little bit better, right? But I know for me, three Charlies is a little bit much, right? I know that I can do about a 170 build drill clean, okay? And so where, where I know that starting to accept Charlies is gonna be a thing, minus that bad grip I got out of the holster, is uh, probably gonna be around like the 1.5 mark, okay? 1.5 seconds. So, let's paste it up again. Let's shoot another time, and just continue to get a little bit of data for you guys. Try it again. All right. So on this one, I'm really gonna try to, uh, try to see my dot in the A zone, for the most part. Um, and see if we can't get kind of a, an, an optimum hit factor. All right, that is a 146, and man, I don't know, Justin, get a close up of that. That's probably a Charlie. We'll call it Charlie. I think it's. We'll call it. It might be, right? It's t I think it's kind of touching the line. We'll call it a Charlie for the sake of the math because the math will work out better for that. Uh, I didn't necessarily want it all to be clean. So we'll call it a Charlie. So one, two, three, four, five, uh, minus two points total. So that's uh, 30 minus two is 28, uh, divided by 1.46. That's a 19.17. So based off of that last thing that I said, where did I say I thought my performance was gonna fall off? Where I start getting Charlies and no longer guaranteed alphas? Around that 1.5 mark. Sure enough, I go sub 1.5 on that build drill and I get one that's a Charlie or, you know, whatever, super close to it. But it's definitely not where all the other shots are and it's not where I was looking, okay? So, 19.17 on the hit back. For me, I've shot a lot of build drills so I kind of know where my performance is, but I know that if off the off the draw, if I'm warmed up, I'm doing pretty well, I can do about a 1.65 to a 1.7 and keep them in the alpha, as long as everything goes uh, pretty, pretty, pretty okay. 
Uh, when I start really pushing the, the speed there, start really splitting that gun hard, it's a little harder to keep up with everything and I'm not quite as accountable for my shots. In a lot of cases, it is gonna turn out pretty well. But let's say I did that 146, uh, and but I actually collected all the points. So uh, we said it was a 28 divided by a 146 was a 1917, all right? Let's say I did 30 divided by a 1.46, uh, that would be a 20.5. So you guys see that the scale, that sliding scale that we talked about, it's getting smaller and smaller. So as you go faster and faster, it gets a little bit more difficult to increase that hit factor because at the end of the day, I'm gonna have to have uh, my hits on paper, right? And so it's up to you to apply what kind of accuracy standard you want. For me, I know that seven yards, this A zone is actually pretty big. And so for me, I really like to try to keep them all clean in the A zone. I really don't like it when I shoot Charlie's, um, as Justin can attest to. Uh, but when I'm getting the kind of speed that I just did, 146, I'm actually pretty happy with that because it's letting me push beyond what I'm comfortable with. I'm shooting the gun faster than normal. And I'm seeing, hey, what is actually possible when I push the speed part of it? And then I get to come up to the target, check it out and see what was the effect of going that fast. And so the logical thing that I can conclude from this is dial it back just a touch, should be able to keep them in the A zone, and I could spend a lot of time working at that pace, 165, 17, and expect good six alphas all centered up in the middle of the target. All right, guys, that is the rundown on hit factor. Um, again, you can use it on whatever target you want, um, but it's pretty nice to shoot it on like a standardized target uh, where if I can you know, send this drill to anybody else, as long as they go get that USPSA target, legal target, they can go shoot the exact same thing and then we can actually compare and see where I'm at. So if I give Justin, uh, if I take the camera from Justin and he goes to shoot it and he shoots a build drill on the same target uh, using a shot timer, we can directly compare how we're doing and we can push each other accordingly, uh, both from our own logs of knowing where we're at with the form of shooting or comparing ourselves with other people. If that's something that's interesting to you, we highly encourage getting into shooting matches because shooting matches is where you get to test both your own performance as well as your performance against other people and it's always fun to win, right? And so this always gives me something to work on uh, if I'm shooting something that's measured in hit factor. It gives me something to work on during my range sessions and that's something that you're gonna see a lot of on this channel. So what does it look like to use hit factor when we make the drill a little bit more complex? So we're gonna add two more targets and we're gonna shoot the blade drill. All right, so as you can see behind me, I've added two more targets. So now we've got three targets. Uh, we're gonna still shoot six rounds, but it's gonna be two on each target uh, as quick as we can, right? Uh, the way we're going to do this is I'm going to shoot it first in what I call points mode. So I'm going to make sure that I collect all of the alphas beyond a shadow of the doubt. Uh, next, we're going to shoot it in speed mode and kind of shoot it at the pace that I wish I could go. And then we're going to try to see if we can find that middle ground and we'll check out the hit factors for each one of those. So points mode, here we go. Two rounds on each. Am I? Nice and conservative, that was a 3.74 for six shots and two target transitions. And as you can see, we've got uh, two alpha, two alpha, and two alpha and a 374. So, once again, let's do that hit factor math. That is a 30 points divided by a 3.74, and so that's an 802, all right? So, uh, let's go ahead and shoot it again, and let's see um, what we can do in like speed mode. All right, so now I'm gonna shoot it at the pace that I wish I could go, right? It'd be really cool to shoot it clean in this pace, but I uh, probably won't have it. All right, here we go. Speed mode. All right, that was a 161. Okay, 161. And yeah, my hits are kind of all over the place just like I expected. So one, two Charlies, uh, Alpha Charlie here, and two Charlies there. Man, that one is actually close to being a Delta. Um, so one, two, three, four, five Charlies, and one Alpha. So uh, five times two is 10, uh, 30 minus 10 is 20. So we only scored 20 points out of a possible 30 divided by a 1.61, 
equals a 12.4. So even kind of going at that speed mode, I'm getting a pretty good hit factor, all right? And so it's definitely showing me, hey, on this short course of fire, accuracy is uh, not as important as speed. So speed needs to be a priority. Now, what can we do if I maybe dial back that speed just a little bit, but actually shoot alphas? Because at the end of the day, I'm not just competing with myself, I'm competing with other people, or I need to be able to compete with other people, and I know other shooters, like Justin or whoever, can definitely shoot more alphas than just one and five. So, uh, let's pace this up and uh, shoot it one more time, and see if we can give a little bit back to the target in terms of uh, kind of my confirmation levels there, and uh, see what that does for my hit factor. This is what we call match mode, where I'm trying to collect as many points as possible uh, in as short a time as possible, but I'm trying to do it to my level of skill, my current level of skill. So on this one, I might be willing to accept one, maybe two Charlies, uh, but I don't really want to go any, any more than that. All right, fresh mag. Okay, 197. Uh, that actually wasn't much better. <laughs> I got, well, so two Charlie, Alpha Charlie, and Alpha Charlie. Um, so let's see, I dropped one, two, three, and four Charlie's total. That's eight points. So that's a 22 divided by a 1.97. It's going to be 1116. So actually not quite as good. Uh, but I definitely was shooting at a pace where I could have shot more alphas. So uh, let's do it one more time. That was uh, just poor performance on my part. What happened? That's life, right? Let's try it one more time. <clears throat> I want to give you guys a good example of this. All right. Here we go. Stand by. Two thirty-eight. Two thirty-eight. Uh, okay, we've got two alphas here. All right, we've got uh, Alpha Charlie here, and then we've got two alphas there. So two thirty-eight, significantly slower than that one sixty-one that we did it in. Um, but I only dropped, let's see, one Charlie. All right, so that's uh, twenty-eight points divided by two point three eight equals an eleven point seven six. All right. So I'm starting to get back up close to where I'm shooting controlled, uh, but I can predict where I'm at. So I know for me, man, probably 12 hit factors about where I want to be um, and about what I want to pursue. So for this 238, I took a lot of time on that first shot. My splits are a little bit slow, around a quarter of a second. So man, I know I could probably clean up a little bit of this and get into that consistent 12 hit factor. Um, but I also know that on just kind of on-demand performance, right? You're shooting about, about 11 and a half, all right? So that's how you're gonna use hit factor when you're shooting drills, a super valuable tool. And if you shoot the same kinds of drills, you can always measure your performance and compare it to other people, or you can compare it to what you've done in the past, or you can just set up drills to compare it to what you've done that day on the range. And that's what we're gonna get in next. We're gonna set up a little mini stage. Uh, we'll just make it up and we'll shoot it and we'll compare some hit factors there. All right, guys, so we set up the range in a little bit of a different fashion. So essentially, we've got a USPSA stage all built out. Uh, I think I've got about 10 targets uh, set up. And we've essentially set up some, some fault lines, some walls, some vision barriers, things like that. So let's uh, just kind of walk through what we've got going on. So um, essentially, we've got to shoot within the fault lines, all right, They're very much like a USPSA match. Uh, so the red uh, wood sticks here are fault lines, essentially, and then we'll make the uh, the 10 yard line there, kind of the back of the shootable area, the shooting area. So the, uh, the, the starting position will be um, toes touching uh, the front stick here, the front ball line. And right away I've got two targets available to me, so I'll shoot those. Uh, we've got a target through the port here, a double stack with a no shoot in there. Um, then we're also going to come over here. Once we pop out from behind the vision barrier, we've got three targets uh, right there in front of us. Got a single uh, lone target by itself back there on against the trap. And then we'll come out of that shooting area and into the other shooting area. And we have to be both feet in, uh, 
inside of the box, and we've got two targets over here, an open and a tuxedo. Um, I've got this all built out on our practice score tablet, and so I've got this match actually put in there, and we'll run it a couple different ways, show you the different hit factors, but essentially the, what I'm, what I'm, what I'm going to do to start is just shoot it uh, collecting all the points. So kind of like we did the Blake drill, um, shoot all the alphas, make sure my points are really good, uh, my, my, my time is going to suffer because of that, but that's fine. We'll show you guys what it looks like to shoot um, all alphas, or as close to it as I can, and then we'll shoot it with uh, kind of speed more as a priority, and then we'll try to find the balance between both on the third run. So, uh, I'm just going to RO myself here, and uh, let's come up to the starting line. All right, so toes touching the start mark. I'm going to start by loading my gun. Check my dot brightness. Looking good. And uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and go through this here. Here we go. Time on that was a 15.68. All right, 15.68. Uh, so I'll pull out my practice score tablet. We'll show you guys how to build matches um, on your phones another time. We're going here, enter scores, stage one. Brennan Brennick, that's me. All right, and let's score this up. So, uh, you guys can see down there, we've got two alpha. Uh, we've got two alpha here on the tuxedo. So I'm going to go ahead and record that right here. Two alpha, two alpha. Um, Two alpha, two alpha, two alpha. Two alpha here as well. And let's see, what does this guy look like? Like squeaking behind. Two alpha and two alpha. And those last two targets should be alphas as well. Two alpha and two alpha. So that finishes that up. Uh, the time, I didn't pick it up, so 15. 68, and what review. All right, so there you go. So out of the 20 alphas available, or the 100 points, we collected all of the points on paper, did it in a 15.68, so that is a 6.37 hit factor, all right? So that's collecting all the alphas. Let's give it another shot now, and let's really prioritize speed. So 15.68, man, I think we could probably do this maybe in like, 12 seconds maybe better. All right, let's try uh let's try that now. Definitely had a mic in there. For sure. All right. Uh <laughs> So, 973 Pure speed mode, not much confirmation going on there, uh, but we will uh, we will take what we got. Charlie Delta on the far target, and then two alpha. Two Charlie, two alpha, alpha Charlie. That's the one I had the mic on. That's an alpha mic. Where's that? Right there. Oh, that is it. Yeah. Alpha. Oh man, that's a great. I'm gonna give myself a delta on that because that's touching the perf. Uh, this one over here. Let's see. Oh, there's the there's another mic. Two alpha, and then Charlie mic. All right. And then I got uh, Alpha Charlie here, and two Charlie there. So Alpha Charlie, two Charlie. All right. So one mic in there, definitely going way too fast uh, for some of those targets. But uh, nine alphas, eight Charlies, two deltas, one mic. I'm at a 6.2 and a 9.73. So slightly less good of a hit factor. Um, honestly, both of those hit factors are bad. So the first one, 6.3, going super slow, shooting all the alphas. The second one, going super fast, but not being very accountable for my hits. 
I'm at about a two, uh, 6.26, so about the same hit factor, uh, oddly enough. So, now what do we do? Man, I've gotta find a good balance point of between that 973, that sub 10 mark, and that 15-ish mark. And then I wanna get maybe, let's see, we've got 10 targets, um, 20 points, let's, I really only wanna allow maybe three Charlies or so, three Charlies max. So let's shoot it again, I'll base it all up again and uh, see what we do when I really get into what uh, Steve Anderson calls match mode, where I'm really just focused on shooting to my level of ability, shooting as many alphas as quickly as I can, but really trying to hold myself to that alpha standard. Um, and we'll see what we can do. All right, that was a 1117. So uh, go ahead and put that in here. 1117, let's go score it up. Alpha Charlie, two alpha. Uh, all right, we've got two alpha, two alpha, two alpha. Two alpha. Two Charlie and two Charlie. And this last target over here, the last two, two alpha and two alpha with a line break there. So uh, 15 alpha, five Charlie in 11.17. That's going to do a hit factor of 8.05, 8.05. All right, guys. So um, as you guys can see, kind of putting some things together, right? First mode, kind of running it all, points mode, making sure we shoot it clean, get all of those points uh, on paper as possible. Then we're shooting at speed mode. You guys actually saw that hit factor go down from like a 6.3 to a 6.2, I think it was. Uh, then we're putting it all together, right? We're shooting the right confirmation level on the targets. We are uh, pushing the speed or the movement speed as much as possible. And we're coming out with an 8.0 hit factor, which is, which is way better. We're talking, you know, one and a half hit factors. Uh, better than what we were doing before. So that's kind of how we break it down. That's how I like to break it down, uh, finding that good match mode, that high level of performance that I can uh, hopefully then repeat consistently on demand. Guys, if you have any questions about hit factor scoring, be sure to hit us up um, or any just questions on how we practice in general, we'd be happy to answer those. Uh, until then, keep shooting, practicing, and we'll see you on the range. The real mark of a good performance shooter is how fast can they pace a target. Woo! You have to be able to go sideways, up, down, all around. Oh my gosh. Bam! That was terrible. <laughs>